So this video will be a look at my deactivated gun collection. Um, as you can see I've got them laid down on the floor here. That's all the ones I've got so far. We'll start off with the small one, which um, down here. <coughs> this is a number two Mark I service revolver from 1938 as carried by all officers in uh, World War II. Um, to give you a closer look at that, I don't know whether it will pick out the... It's just about picking out, but it's not focusing on the uh, Enfield uh, logo, or the crown, what it is, the number 2 Mark 1. And obviously the the year 1938, oh no, it's coming into sharper focus now, you might be able to see that better. But uh, that's the service revolver. Obviously, you've got the hammer at the back, cock it to single action. Notice it's got a shorter trigger pull, but uh, then it can also fire double action, which is just pulling the trigger like that. But you get single action like that. So all the mechanism inside still works. The only th the thing they do to deactivate it is you can see the end of that. It's plugged solid. It's also that area where it's been ground. There's a hardened steel pin been drilled, and uh, it's been drilled, tapped, and screwed in there and ground off flush. It's also blocked with weld towards the cylinder end. And uh, if I just break it open off camera, because it's a break action revolver, you will see inside the, the cylinders are clear. But um, obviously it's blocked off down the barrel. The, if I cock the hammer back, you'll see there's no firing pin. So there used to be a spiky thing attached to here, which is the firing pin, which would obviously through that hole at the top of the plate there and fire the rounds so that's the small stuff out of the way uh, and then next this is going back a hell of a long time but uh, what I have here in the middle is a rather nice Mark II Martini Henry rifle uh, which was probably used in the Zulu War because the uh, the year on it it's rather faint but it's from 1875 lever action if you've ever seen the film Zulu you will have seen plenty of these but, uh, the action still works on this one and uh, with these they don't actually need to be deactivated because they're an obsolete calibre which basically means you can't buy the bullets for them anymore. Well, they were handmade back in those days anyway. And they don't make them nowadays. So, this could still fire if you could still get the bullets. But, obviously you can't. But the mechanism still works. Pull down that lever there. That opens the falling block breech. Close the lever. That cocks it. And that fires. So that was the Martini Henry as used in the Zulu War. And coming down to something a little more modern, well, when I say modern, I mean World War I, we have a 1918 dated short magazine Lee Enfield rifle, complete with bayonet and sling. And this is a bolt action rifle action still works on it obviously that the bolt open close it a little bit of a struggle with one hand but we'll try it's got a powerful spring on this you see so doing it one handed is a bit of a challenge but that's closed cocked mechanism still works on that still dry fire it very nice gun indeed this was the first ever gun I bought. Um, so yeah, that was the um, Lee Enfield SMLE 1918. 
And I think to finish off the grand finale, we'll have to uh, talk about the Bren gun. The Mark I Bren gun from 1941. This is the biggest gun I've got in my collection so far. Mind you, I don't think I'll have, a, I'll have much space for any, any more big guns. It was a bit of a struggle finding a place to put this, but I finally found one. Um, yeah, how am I going to do this? I've got the two other rifles in I'm going to have to move them. But, uh, yeah, so this is a Mark I Bren gun. Machine gun. A light machine gun. Uh, can fire fully and semi-automatic. There's the cocking handle in the out position. Pull it back. Lock it forwards. And that still fires. Now you can hear how fierce the spring is on that. It's, um, you know, even with no rounds in, there's actually a little bit of recoil because of the bolt slamming forwards. It's a very, very heavy weapon. Um, it's amazing when you actually think. People actually used to carry these for miles. But they used to have slings, but even with slings, they're dead heavy. You know, it'd be a challenge. So, this one still cocks, dry fires. Magazine still comes off in the usual way. Obviously there's no rounds in there because it cannot chamber live rounds. So, click that back on there like that. It's got the, if I turn it round without damaging any furniture. <coughs> Told you it was heavy. Got the sight adjustment on this side. Which is via way of this dial. There's a little window in there where all the sight ranges are so you can set your range and obviously this elevates this sight the rear sight here you've got your select fire down here you've got safe the weapon is on safe full auto if you flick it back to R which means rounds that's just um, semi-automatic fire so one you cock the lever once and one pull of the trigger will fire one round you don't have to re-cock it until obviously the magazine's empty and you put a new one in but there's a view of the stamping the year and obviously the mark and that funny D with a little bit in the middle is an Enfield mark so this gun was made by Enfield, there was plenty of other, of other manufacturers. Now this lever here is the barrel release lever, but as you can see, it doesn't come off because it's welded solid because it's a deactivated weapon. So they've obviously uh, plugged the barrel. And obviously if you were able to remove it, you could theoretically reactivate the weapon. It wouldn't be that difficult, but that's why they weld them back on. So you cannot you cannot reactivate the weapons. Um, it does strip. It would be a bit of a challenge to do because I haven't actually got a tripod, but you can take it apart. This rear pin down here does actually pull out. And the whole weapon separates, and you can remove the bolt and the gas parts as well. Well, there should be a gas piston in there, but. Part of the deactivation is to cut that off, but um, the rest of the gas parts are back here. They are still there, along with the bolt, which is up here. But obviously the gas piston has to be removed, because in theory, again, you could convert it back to a live weapon if you had the gas parts. Um, but obviously they've been cut off. It's been made safe. So these can actually be owned fully legally in the UK without a firearms license as long as you are 18 or over and obviously as long as you don't go um, brandishing them down the street because that will get the police called on you when brandishing something like this down the street um, because obviously people can't tell it's a deactivated weapon um, for all intents and purposes this looks 
well, it was a live weapon, so people would not be able to tell the difference between you know, the live weapon and the deactivated one, which this is. Um, only when you strip it down and look at the internals, you'd be able to tell the difference. So, obviously, you don't go brandishing these around the street. But obviously, for home display, they don't need to be locked in a, a gun safe or anything. Uh, you can hang them on your walls. It, make a nice display, do pretty much anything with them um, as long as you stay on the right side of the law and up there that set of, those sets of hooks that's for the Martini Henry and the Lee Enfield I've got them hung up on my wall that Bren gun that goes on top of my wardrobe um, and that pistol that just um, goes in its holster and goes on my, top of my cabinet just a little display item. So uh, that was a little, um, little bit of my collection of deactivated guns. Thanks for.